Hey there, this is Red, and I wanted to do a Red review, and the thing that I wanted to talk about was modular encounters. So we kind of talk a lot about the, the villains that are part of the game, you know, Rhino, Claw, Ultron, but we don't really talk a whole lot about the modular encounters. So I wanted to do a review of the modular encounters that are out there and what I've seen from them so far. So let's start off with the ones that are part of the core set. So the first one that you use when you're encountering Rhino is Bomb Scare, right? So the Bomb Scare modular encounter has that side scheme. And to me, this one's been really, I want to say a non-factor in the game. Um, the, the, it only taking two plus one threat on top of it, the ability to thwart and get that out of there has been pretty easy so far. Um, and the one acceleration token, it's been easy to get it out of the way. So bomb scare hasn't been a problem. Um, some of the things that have caused me pain are these two Hydra bombers that come as part of that modular encounter. Now, they don't have a whole lot of health and they don't have very much scheme or attack, but that little thing when they come into play and they do two damage or a threat, Normally, it's not all that bad, but there have been some very inopportune times when that has hit and caused me some pain. So, of this modular encounter, I think the Hydra Bombers are the ones that cause me the most grief. Now, let's see. Next up is there's an explosion in there. So, the explosion um, does damage, but it has to have Bomb Scare out there. And being that I don't have a problem with Bomb Scare, I really haven't had a problem with Explosion. So it tends to be a card that always just surges by and I grab the next card. So the last two cards that are a part of this one are False Alarm. So the False Alarm cards initially to me were another one that just kind of didn't really matter as a part of that modular encounter. But now that I've played Thor some, um... It's actually, these have more meaning to me now. So Thor's Defender of the Nine Realms is a thwart action. So being confused actually creates a problem for Thor, whereas most characters, they don't have very many cards that relate to thwarting. So the, the False Alarm has caused me issues playing my Thor deck against Rhino with Bomb Scare in it. So newfound respect for False Alarm recently. But I would say that I would agree that um, Bomb Scare is the easiest of the modular encounters to add to the deck. All right, so the next one that you run into is when you do Claw, they say to use Masters of Evil. So the Masters of Evil side scheme just brings out another Master of Evil. Um, and then for three per player, since I play solo, it's really not all that bad to get through and than an acceleration token like nor is normal for most of these. Um, where, I, where I find the most pain in the Masters of Evil is the actual Masters of Evil. So Radioactive Man, who's kind of see-through because I've got a green screen there. Um, he's really not all that bad health and scheme-wise, right? But his, I'm sorry, attack and scheme-wise, his health of seven health is a pain. So that is one of the things about the Masters of Evil is they have a lot of health, so it's tough to take them out. Um, his random discard is another and really annoying attribute uh, that comes into play and sometimes it doesn't matter at all but other times it hits just that one specific card that you're planning to use the next round. Um, so Radioactive Man, he's, he's annoying. I don't think he's the worst of the Masters of Evil. Um, Whirlwind is another one that I find annoying but still not horrible. Uh, part of that is due to the fact that I, I pretty much play solo, so his deal damage to one, one damage to each hero isn't a big thing because I, there's just one of me out there. But the six health again and the two attack is still can be a pain. Um, Tiger Shark with the three attack is a little bit on the scary side. Um, also, his boost of giving the villain a toughness card tends to happen exactly when I don't want it to happen. So, uh, Tiger Shark is another one that can be a pain. Now, this guy, um, he actually hasn't been a pain, but that's because I'm so scared of him that I pretty much take him out right away. Um, 
he's got five health, so it's the least of the masters of evil, but he's got three attack, and then he likes to kill your allies. So I usually t make sure to take care of him really quick. He's the one I'm most afraid of, um, but he hasn't caused me too many problems because I have been able to kill him up front almost all the time. So the five health, the least of those masters of evil, makes him a little bit more handleable, if that's actually a word, but um, he's the one that scares me the most of the ones that are out there. All right, so then what rounds out the Masters of Evil encounter deck is a couple of Masters of Mayhem that helps churn those Masters of Evil out or activate them if they're already out there. So it's definitely a step up from Bomb Scare. I don't think that's a horrible deck to deal with. I think most of the heroes handle them pretty well. Um, Thor is a little bit interesting in that he tends to bring those guys out, right? All right, so let's talk about the next one up there, which is Under Attack, which you normally play with Ultron. Uh, so the Under Attack side scheme is a pretty powerful one. Uh, and this is another one that's caused me pain. So uh, the two threat or three damage usually happens exactly when you don't want it to. Then it's got three boost icons on it too. So um, yeah, that one, that one can create problems. Um, the other cards that come with that, there's a couple that help improve the villain. So let's see here. There is Vibranium Armor. Now, I really haven't had too much of a problem with Vibranium Armor. Um, giving the villain tough cards after taking damage is, is an annoying thing, but I haven't ran into that one a whole lot. The one that I have ran into a lot more is this one, which is the Concussive Blast. So getting a villain with an additional attack and a retaliate is way annoying. Um, and then it takes you two energy to get it off of there. That's not a cool card. Then you add in the other two cards, which seem innocent enough. They're, they seem like they would not be that bad. Which are the Concussive Blasts. So one damage to each friendly character. Uh, this is one that tends to be an ally killer for me. Like it'll wipe my allies off the board. This card seems to come out when I'm like towing the line on how much health I have. Uh, it, it seems not horrible, but this card has treated me badly. So um, Concussive Blast is a rough one for me. I And I would agree it's another step up from the Masters of Evil. So um, I don't think it's a big step up from the Masters of Evil, but it's definitely a step up from the Masters of Evil. All right, so that's the first three modular encounters, and you see those in... Rhino, and then Claw, and then Ultron are the ones that they recommend. So there's a couple others that come with the core deck. Uh, the first one that comes in addition is the Legions of Hydra. Uh, now the Legions of Hydra is pretty rude. So when it comes into play, you're going to go look for Madam Hydra, and there's actually two of them that end up in your deck, right? And then you go look for Madam Hydra, and Madam Hydra has got six health. And the tough thing about her is that when you can't get rid of her until you get rid of the legions of Hydra, she doesn't take damage. So it's a it's a really rough combo. Uh, when those come out, it's it changes the game. I mean that's that's a big deal. She is a tough modular encounter, and that side scheme piece is rough. And in addition to that, you add in the three Hydra soldiers. And with their the four health usually puts them right out of range of most of the easy hits. So it's going to take a couple of hits usually to take them out. And then they have guard. So even more annoying because they're, they're blocking for the villain, right? And then on top of that, when you beat them, you get another encounter card. So um, just not a fun minion to deal with, right? Not that they do anything horrible in and of themselves. It's just the effects that are around them. That are that make them pretty rough so i think the step up to the uh the legions of hydra is is a big step up like there's there's a lot more challenge once you throw that deck into your into your main villain all right so the last one i actually haven't played so the last one is the doomsday chair and with the doomsday chair there's a couple of doomsday chair cards all right um, and they start off with eight threat, which is crazy. And then you bring 
Modok into play. And Modok's got eight health, two attack, and retaliate two, um, which is also crazy. So I haven't played with this uh, modular encounter, but what I read from forums and things is it's just better to leave him alone because trying to kill him, the amount of times it takes to attack him and then the retaliate damage that you take, then on top of that, the cards tend to come back that it's best to work on beating down the villain than it is to try to deal with Modoc. So on top of that, you have your upgrades there, which make him even even worse right so um i haven't tried this one i don't know that i've had a maybe if i go back to the cap deck i might throw that in one of the early encounters to see if he can handle modok too but uh i i've shied away from that one right now because i had enough trouble with the other stuff the way that it is okay so wrecking crew i would say really doesn't have modular encounters that come with it uh, all of the villains have side schemes. There's a main scheme and side schemes, but there's not really, those don't slot into, like theoretically, all of these ones that we just covered can slot in with other villains. Wrecking Crew doesn't have that. They're all pretty much villain specific. So then we start talking about the Goblin scenario pack that came out. Now the Goblin scenario pack has something that's very similar in the Goblin gimmicks. So the Goblin gimmicks, which end up being your your goblin glider there and your pumpkin bombs and you got some intimidation and then you have your genitor of healing those all really to me only work with the goblin deck um they're all very annoying cards but they all seem like really extensions of green goblin right so uh thus far i've only played the mutagen scenario and uh these fit right in and make that scenario even harder, which is great because it's hard enough the way that it is. So um, those, I don't really consider a modular encounter deck. They get added in the Goblin, but I wouldn't consider them modular and want to add them. I think they would break theme if you were to throw them in with say Rhino or something else like that, all right? But there are three other modular encounters that come with Green Goblin that I think are good modular encounters. So the first one that we've got here is a mess of things, right? And that one is, um, it highlights Scorpion. So Scorpion is annoying in the fact that um, he's quick striking. He's got three scheme and three attack. And almost all the cards that are there do some sort of stunning, right? It, it likes to stun your character over and over again. Uh, Scorpion's tough. So where would I put him? I put him maybe between Masters of Evil and Ultrons uh, under attack. Um, just the, the stunning is something that most characters tend to get over pretty well, but uh, it's it, it is definitely annoying. So and I think the worst thing of his deck is he throws another gang up in there, and um, when you're doing scenarios that involve a lot of minions having another gang up in there changes the game that's another one where once those sometimes having the villain get another attack can be eh, okay but you get a gang up where that and the three minions that are potentially out there jump on you too uh that makes a huge change to the game so that's i think that's the big thing with the scorpion deck there a mess of things is that additional gang up added to it now the, the next modular encounter I've played uh, with maybe half a dozen, maybe 10 times, uh, quite a few times, uh, and that is the Power Drain one. So Power Drain, the main thing about Power Drain, so I would say Power Drain itself is kind of a, uh, what do I want to say there? It's a situational as to how rough that deck is going to be for you. So what you see a lot of in this deck is the discard the cards, right? So Electro himself is, is kind of a pain, but all of these like boost cards are discard three cards or take three cards off the encounter deck, right? And there's another one that's, well, this one's indirect damage, but you're also taking a couple cards off the encounter deck and the boost is discard three cards. And then you've got a discard seven cards off the encounter deck. Um, 
in any hero that you're playing that tends to dig through the encounter deck, so again, we go back to Thor, let's say, who likes to use your Defender of the Nine Realms and causes you to go through the deck fairly quickly. You throw this on top of that and you are paging through the villain deck insanely fast, right? So um, I think that's, that's why Electro is very dependent on which character you're playing and which uh, scenario you're playing. Um, but it's it's definitely makes the game tougher. When you're when you're one of those characters that falls into those realms, I would say it is as tough as Legions of Hydra potentially, um, just because it can speed up the, the game so fast, those acceleration tokens can come out so quick. Um, but if you're if you're on the other side of that and not playing somebody that's going through a whole lot of cards, then he's definitely not as bad. And I'd put him more at the maybe like the Masters of Evil type range. All right, so recently I've played with Tombstone. So Tombstone's got uh, the Running Interference, Modular Encounter, and this is an annoying side scheme that comes out. Um, it's not all that bad. Uh, we'll say Tombstone himself, I managed to kill him right when he came out. I, tend, I had my um, Swinging Web Kick was able to do enough damage between that and hitting him to take him out. But looking at him, had he lived, had he come out at a different time, um, the two scheme, three attack, and then the knocking cards out of your hand is monstrous bad. So Tombstone looks like an, just a horrible villain to fight. Now I haven't run into that card yet, um, but not being able to ready or change form that's that's not a nice one. You're gonna have to spend those resources right off the bat because I don't think you can I don't think you can sit around with that card on you for any amount of time. In addition to that, I did run into a media coverage, and the uh, the tough thing about the media coverage is in order to get rid of it, you need to be on your alter ego side. It works out good for Spider Man because he makes that resource on his alter ego side, but for other characters, it would be rough. It's also really rough when that comes out and you're getting like three encounter cards and this ends up being the first encounter card that you pull. So then after that, the other two encounter cards double there when revealed. Um, so it can be a very ugly card when it comes out. I think I ended up with like a double gang up and it was, it was not pretty. So media coverage, I think this one, this deck, I don't know that it's, so I haven't played MODOK, so it's tough to say that it's MODOK level, but I think I would put it there. Um, I, definitely Legions of Hydra, right up there with Legions of Hydra and potentially beyond Legions of Hydra. So um, I guess that's it for now on the cover. And that's all the modular encounter decks, right? So you got some in the core set, you have some in Green Goblin and then the Wrecking Crew, really all of those pretty much go with the wrecking crew. So I'd be interested to hear what your comments are. Which which of the modular encounters do you not like to play with? Do you never play with Bomb Scare just because it's so weak? Or do you always play with MODOK? Is MODOK really that bad? I haven't played him yet. So uh, let me know in the comments what you think. And if I'm on track with some of the comments I'm making about stuff or I'm way off base, let me know. Thanks for watching.